Thailand has been through a dramatic round of elections over the weekend. The main opposition party, if you can call it so, the Move Forward Party, which has pitched itself as a rebel organization, as an anti-establishment organization, has emerged as the biggest force in the House of Representatives, which is the lower house of parliament. Sec coming second is the Pew Thai Party, which is also an opposition party. And this means that the pro-military junta, pro-establishment uh, forces which were so powerful in Thailand for so long have actually come a distant third. But this does not mean that these two opposition parties in alliance will be immediately able to follow the government. In fact, there's a very complex process of government formation. We are going to be talking about this process today. We are going to be talking about what the election might signify, might symbolize for the people of Thailand, what lies ahead for them. To talk about all this, we have with us Khitanath Varabhavan, who's an activist with the, South, with the Thailand Office of Focus on the Global South. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Prasan. Very happy to be here with NewsQuick today. Right. Uh, so, so start with, could you maybe just tell us about the government process I was talking about, which is that, uh, okay, the elections were held for the House of Representatives, that's the lower house of parliament. Now, it does look like the two biggest parties together, that is uh, Move Forward Party and Few Thai Party, uh, do have a majority in that house. But why are we not sure they may not form the government? Yes, that's totally a big question for us. Um, in the past, if you can remember, the election in 2019, even though Pua Thai Party got the majority vote, but they are unable to form the majority government that time. So the pro-establishment and the pro-kunta government try every way they can to be in power, to stay in status quo. And this time, it remained the same that the pro-democracy comes as a consensus of the Thai people, but then we are not so sure due to the legal structure of the previous Kunta government that they lied ahead and together with the independent, so-called independent organization, but lead by the um, pro-establishment kind of architecture, they try to perhaps file a way to throw down the pro-democracy movement emerging for progressive agenda. So in these coming days, um, Pita government from Move Forward Party try every way they can. In, uh, and together with Pure Thai Party, they try to make sure that they will try every way to work together to assert people's will in this election. So as you say already that we got the majority vote and they try to form 309, I think, MP seats in order to form the majority government first. All right. So is this, uh, could you also maybe take us to the how this process works in terms of, I believe there is also a Senate which together and the, and the two houses together decide the government. But uh, why is it uh, not clear as of yet? Exactly. So the senators, um, they are in the higher house. So the lower house have the three, 500 seats and together with the senators, 250 seats. Um, this will form um, the MPs in Thailand. And by law, it says that um, the MP with the um, approval from the, um, uh, from the house will have 376 um, representatives voting in support of, to form the government. And for now, for the past um, election, the senators show every way that they can, that they will not support any prime minister that come from the pro-democracy side. So this time again, because they are still in power, the senators, I think they clearly showed a way that they would not in any way support the person who have the progressive stance and they try to uh, every way to frame that pro-democracy government equal the one who try to throw down the monarchy and try to um, establish kind of another turbulence in the country. So again, the senator will not be very much supportive of people's will and that very much our concern for now, how Thailand with majority votes from the people can form the pro-democracy government, even though we have the slight political maybe earthquake for pro-democracy win, a consensus of Thai people already. Right. I believe the senators were all appointed by the previous uh, military junta government, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Exactly, exactly. So this is, I would say, the legal architecture previously lie for the status quo to remain in power. And I'm not sure if I can say it's lucky, but then um, the clause in the constitution, they will be out of power by next year in May. So that means that in any chance, yeah, we have pretty much a hope for the people um, to move forward, to mobilize yeah, for, for democracy. 
yeah, Absolutely. without the senator in power. Right. So, uh, so could you let's let's go a bit in detail into the results. We do know, for instance, that the largest party is the uh, Move Forward Party, and like I said, it has pitched itself as uh, you know, you know, it has appealed on the issues of uh, you know an anti-military sentiment. It has tapped into that. It has talked about uh, you know, uh, it has actually recruited a lot of people who were part of the uh, anti-monarchy protests that took place over the past couple of years. So, how did it pitch itself to uh, people in Thailand, and what were its key agenda points? Mm -hmm. uh, for the result first, uh, Move Forward Party got 153, if I'm not uh, mistaken, seats in the parliament at the moment as for the provisional um, results. And Pua Thai got 141 seats in the parliament. And another thing is that the observers in Thailand see is that even though they got um, taken the seats, but the percentage that people vote for them is still slightly not a majority. For example, out of um, 39 million votes come out, um, I think 11 million votes for future uh, move forward party. So that means that um, for the district voters, 25% go to move forward party and 36 go to um, the party list candidates. Mm -hmm. So that means if move forward party try to advocate for very progressive issues, for example, the very sensitive one on monarchy reform, it means that they would need to aware that even though they got very a slight, like very earthquake of victory, but then um, maybe some people still keeping up to understand their issues. So that means that there's a lot of communication on the policies that move forward party need to taken forward after the election. And um, yeah, as for the agenda, they try to bring in not only the Les Majest reform, they also try to uh, put the military out of politics. So all the big issues are there on the table and some coalition parties may not totally agree with all of them. I would say that that's also a rough road ahead for them internally and externally yeah, in order to form the government. Right. But also to sort of understand their agenda a bit further, uh, in terms of many of the demands that are often raised by people's movements and organizations, for instance, we know that, you know, uh, in terms of uh, the question of inequality, the question of withdrawal of some of the reforms that we talk about, has the party taken a stand on some of these, on like, for instance, economic policies? Mm -hmm. And I think they make sure that their policy are not populist policy. They try to argue that Move Forward Party goes for the social welfare policy. And for example, they try to guarantee some standard and minimum um, welfare policy for each sectors, you know, for um, the newborn babies, for the aging uh, persons in Thailand, for example. And in every debate they go to, they try to back up with research, how the inflation makes the calculation, why Thailand need to step up every year, for example, in order to increase minimum wages and how they try to light up for um, the, low, the, the, the standard income, for example. So I think their argument will say that uh, what Thailand needs is not populist policy anymore, but some kind of standard in order to guarantee social welfare, not just the social safety net. That's interesting. So uh, let's look at the other side of the picture. We know that the opposition suffered quite a huge blow. Prime Minister Prayuth Chan Ocha himself, his his party itself, quite you know performing poor, quite poorly. So what do you think led to these right wing forces actually suffering such a huge defeat? Because I believe the highest scoring, the highest right wing party is around seventy seats or something, if I'm not mistaken. That's a very important question, and I think we try to monitor very well how the reaction from their sides are going on. But at the moment, what we can see clearly that the election results can show that maybe people will not totally agree with all the progressive agenda on the table. What the consensus we have at the moment is that people are tired of the old regime and the old guards in the, in the Thailand politics for eight years. So I think in some way, people would not have that kind of um, maybe a radical feeling of that this new um, agenda on the table is not for them. I think they will try to seek yeah, what are they offering for the people. And it's just clearly for them that people are open yeah, to more democratic, more inclusive kind of process. And yesterday, I think Pita, um, the prime minister candidate at the moment from Move Forward Party, he tried to be very clear that 
Thailand, yeah, we are um, on the concurring of conflicts every um yeah for a long time, and he understand that everything can be resolved peacefully. And one of the thing that we people can do is to transmit this through the par parliamentary process. Mm -hmm. So that can be one thing that people can make sure. However, the proposal can be it can be transmitted yeah to the parliamentary processes. And finally, just to sort of also go through quickly what seem to be the demands of the, you know, progressive sectors of society, so to speak, the trade unions, the farmers movements. At this point, what is their approach to the, how are they seeing the election? What are the kind of issues they think need to be addressed first? Mm -hmm. I think one thing that Move Forward try to, try to make sure all the time is that they try to also invite representatives from this sector to be, uh, uh, to be on the party itself to represent themselves, to voice their demands. And I think they pretty welcome the victory of Move Forward Party. Yeah, we can see, um, I think on number four or five party list candidate, he directly come from the trade union representative. And also I think we have many um, supporters from peasant movement that they announce, I think officially to endorse Move Forward and Future Forward even before the, the position, the agenda. And then I think people from the activist sectors um, regards Move Forward Party as some kind of political, um, yeah, their political movement, yeah, to for them to be able to feed in their demands directly. So I think you know, they're pretty welcome and they also endorse other progressive party, even though they didn't get seat, for example, the Commoner Party that originally came from the Northeast. Yeah, I think people are looking forward for the multi-party system in Thailand, and then we cannot yeah, tolerate any more undemocratic processes. So we look forward into more uh, meaningful participation. And then I think Move Forward will not only be the party, not only be the single party for democracy in the future, there will be more, um, I think, detailed party offering many demands for the people in the future very soon. Thank you uh, so much for talking to us, giving us a quick and, you know, very precise update of what's happening in Thailand. It's really a complicated picture. Like you said, the first question itself is who's going to form the government. That itself determines a lot of things. If, uh, you know, if future, if move forward party comes to power, what its positions are on a lot of issues still remains very unclear again, as you've said. Nonetheless, uh, you know, some interesting uh, times ahead, so to speak. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you so much, Prasant. And that's all we have time for today. Keep watching People's Dispatch.